Welcome to the Wander Learn Show. I'm your host, Franz Tapon. In this episode, we talk about travel styles with Pale Bo, the host of the Radio Vagabond podcast. What kind of travel style do you have? Do you like to go fast? Do you like to go slow? Do you like to focus on food, museums, history, the people? It's a way to really expand your ways of travel. You want to expand your ways of travel. You want to keep an open mind and go to places that go beyond your comfort zone. I really encourage people to always travel beyond their comfort zone and just a little bit beyond their comfort zone just to stretch themselves and try different travel styles because you never know. Sometimes it's when you're pushing yourself to limit that you experience some amazing adventures. All right, let's go dive in to travel styles. And this is the fourth and final episode with Pali Bo in 2024. Don't forget to go to theradiovagabond.com to subscribe to his podcast. So let's talk about travel styles. Right. But people like us, who are kind of nomadic, we tend to go relatively slowly. One travel style is the guy who's got mm-hmm. two weeks vacation, and so they hit like yeah. 10 countries in two weeks. Yeah, and when, when we speak to those extreme travelers, uh, when we were at um, Extraordinary Travel Festival in Yerevan, uh, and, and we see these people, and a lot of people, they have the misconception that country counters, quote unquote, are people that rush in and out of a country, just leave the airport, say, okay, I've been here and then leave. And that is very rare uh, um, Mm. is in that community is my feeling. That's true. Uh, When it comes to nomads, I think I travel, I move more than most nomads. For example, when I was in Buenos Aires, uh, there were a lot of other digital nomads there and they stayed in the same place for three months. Mm. I was there for three months. I stayed in nine different Airbnbs. Uh, but I'm, still in yeah in but, Buenos Aires yeah so but so I I mm. the, the the advantage for me is like I get to see something new and I get to adjust to something new and I I know the different neighborhoods of yes. Buenos Aires because I moved so much so I I know what I like I do that and, through house sitting so yeah. I've been in Toronto yeah. for about three months uh-huh. and I've had like five different house sits okay. at least at least so kind of the similar idea and you're absolutely right yeah. when you do different house sits or in this case Airbnbs either way you see a different neighborhood. And that's a way to discover. And yeah. when you're talking about a big city like Toronto, you mm-hmm. really, it's, it's huge. And you, yeah. you, you get a but, different flavor. And, and, and I've been saying this for f- three, four years now. I can see myself slowing down. And I, I feel I am slowing a little bit more down. Uh, I'm here in, in Toronto for a couple of months, I think. And oh, yeah, I've been here three weeks already. And I've stayed in three different places and done a road trip as well. <laughs> so and now I'm uh, really tomorrow sad. I'm moving in and doing a house sit for three weeks. Uh, so let's see after that. And uh, then you don't really know, except for your TBEX conferences. Yeah. And, and I, I, I was, you see, the, the thing I went quickly over when I said the thing about that wouldn't let me into the US uh, um, because I'd been to Syria and uh, I was supposed to go to another TBEX in Alaska and I really want to go to Alaska. Uh, I have never been there. It would be my 49th state. So now I'm a trying to see if I can get a regular visa. And I applied for that here in Toronto. And when I was sending in the application, I was told, oh, you can get a, an interview in 860 days. So, so uh, a little bit more than two years. That's going to be difficult. I'm trying to speak to the U.S. Embassy in Copenhagen, uh, where they only have a waiting time of 35 days for some reason, uh, to see if they will do the interview online. Uh, or if I would have to get myself on a plane to just have a meeting in, in I don't I don't know I don't know, but if not, I which I think I don't think is going to happen. I have this feeling in my bones that is not going to happen uh, by September. So then I might just go to Chiang Mai and hang out there for a while. Uh, I'm trying to focus more on work. I have so many projects that I'm trying to start right now. So I need to be not traveling as fast. And, uh, and Chiang Mai is a place that it's easy to stay for a nomad, big yeah. nomad community. And yeah, uh, I'll sure. be close to Bangkok where we're both going in November. Right. Yeah. So when are you going to be in Chiang Mai? I don't know. <laughs> but you're going to be there before November? Yeah. Okay. That's uh, I I think so. So if, if if I get a definite no to the visa meeting before yeah. September, I might see if I can get myself there um, uh, after the house sit, uh, or mm-hmm. maybe I'll do another house sit here uh, if I can get one. And then why'd you pick uh, Mississauga? Which um, is a I, of I was Toronto. just looking for something around Toronto. But why Toronto? I love okay. it here. Uh, I I've, I've been here a couple of times. Why not Quebec? 
Um, it's French. Uh, uh, yeah, I, my English is better than my French. <laughs> you can get by what with French. What about Vancouver? Yeah, that could have been an option. I've I've Too always far? said I Toronto's one of my favorite cities and people say, "Okay, if you like Toronto, you're going to love Vancouver." So, I'll tell I tell me you've never been to Vancouver. I have, but I was there for a week and a half and it poured down with the rain all the time as it does. Never in, happens in Vancouver. <laughs> as it does. <laughs> so, it didn't give the best impression, but uh, so I want to go what back. What time of year was that? It wasn't where it wasn't supposed to. Oh, it was I like June or July? Yeah, I don't remember. It was really warm. Remember. Was it cold? Yeah. Because, I mean, it rains mainly in the winter, yeah. a lot. It was not in the winter. Okay. Uh, it I don't remember cold. exactly when it was, but, um, yeah. Yeah, they do get a lot of rain. Yeah. But the Vancouver Island, by the way, gets a lot less, oh, which oh. is an island, obviously, nearby. Yeah, this was this was during the pandemic. Uh, and, yeah, so it was in 21 at some point. Um, uh, yeah, probably June. And I, I actually had booked a a boat from uh, Seattle to go to Vancouver Island. Uh, and then after that, they stopped it again because of COVID. And I couldn't, I, I wanted to go to Canada and Vancouver, uh, but I wanted to do it th going to Vancouver Island first. Uh, and I couldn't get the train. There were no trains because of the pandemic. There were no buses. Uh, so I had to get on a stupid flight and fly from <laughs> from Seattle to Vancouver, which was crazy because it's so close by. Uh, right. And when I got to Canada, I thought, oh, finally meeting some friendly Canadians. And I said, I'm here. And I was smiling. And they said, where do you live? I said, well, I'm a nomad. I don't live anywhere. No, no, come on. Do you live in the U.S.? No, I'm a nomad. No, do you, do you live in Canada? No. Do you live in Denmark? Where's your residency? I, like I said, I travel full time. And then he said, you travel during a global pandemic? <laughs> and he repeated that three times. And I said, yeah, it, I, I, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. And he sent me into a back office as well. And there was a woman asking me the exact same questions. They just could not wrap their head around me being a nomad in the pandemic. But uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it was a, a strange time to be traveling. Yeah. Um, but you did it. You pulled it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm thinking of going to Chiang Mai and hanging out there before. What what is your plan after Toronto? I will be going to uh, Estonia. Oh, that's Finland. the other way. Yeah, yeah, Finland. Uh, I like it's it's nice to stay in the northern far northern hemisphere during these hot because. Temperatures are going up high, yeah. And like to avoid the southern, like near the yeah, equator, yeah. if you will. Um, but yeah, I, either, either that for for Finland, or when it's really cold and you can stay in an ice igloo or something. That's true. And see the northern lights. That's yeah. true. That's true. At some point, I, I'll I might steal from your playbook. I probably won't go to Chiang Mai, but I, I might go to Thailand a little bit early. Um, I also want to. I would like to go back to Libya. Uh, I've only saw southern Libya. I never saw the Mediterranean side of Libya. Uh -huh. So that might be in January 2025, but I don't know that yet. No. Um, anyway, that's my plan. So on our next meeting, on our next podcast, mm -hmm. I want to talk about geopolitics with you because you're not an American. I'm a quasi-American. Mm -hmm. And we can discuss about global issues because sometimes as world travelers, we kind of, I would like to think, and maybe I'm deceiving myself, that of us being more objective because we kind of have a more global view mm -hmm. and we don't, we're less partisan, for example. Mm -hmm. And so I always like to talk to nomads about the geopolitical situations that are facing the planet. So let's talk about that in our next podcast. So we're doing one more. Yes. Oh, and before we go, though, plug your show. Yeah, my podcast is called The Radio Vagabond. And if you don't want to hear it in Danish, uh, make sure that you put the the in there. So The Radio Vagabond and it's uh, theradiovagabond.com. And you are? Wanderlearn.com. And you can search on any podcast player, Wanderlearn. I just put it up on YouTube, by the way. Oh, yeah. So that you can have all your podcasts yeah. Yeah. go up there as well. They have a YouTube podcast, basically. Yeah. yeah. So for And the podcast is called Wanderlearn because you wander and you learn. And that is that. what the topic of the next episode is. See you guys next time. See ya. And that ends this episode of the Wanderlearn podcast, where we explore travel, technology, and transformation. If you'd like to see the show notes with links to what we've talked about, go to wanderlearn.com and click on this episode. If you'd like to connect with me, just remember F Tapon. That's my first initial and my last name. F Tapon is always my social media username. My website is ftapon.com. 
Do you want to leave me an anonymous voicemail where you can make a comment or ask a question? Then go to speakpipe.com slash ftapon. Furthermore, if you'd like to get rewarded for supporting my projects, then go to patreon.com slash ftapon. That's where you can pick up some remarkable rewards for as little as $2 a month. Now, five quick favors. Number one, subscribe to the Wander Learn podcast. Two, download it. Three, share it. Four, review it. And five, sign up for my newsletter at wanderlearn.com. Our theme music was composed by Eric Stratman. This is Francis Tapon encouraging you to wander and learn. Thank you.